Thank you so much. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to our National Council of Negro Women, Good Health Wins. This is our community of practice number 23, and we are just so delighted to have with us our partners from Partnering with Vaccine Equity. My name is Synovia Moss, and I have the pleasure of serving as the National Project Manager for the Good Health Women's Immunization Networks, or Good Health Wins, uh, a wonderful collaboration that you're going to learn more about um, as we proceed. But if for those of you who are new, who are joining us, the National Council of Negro Women was founded on December 5th, 1935 by Mary McLeod Bethune, a distinguished educator and government consultant whose parents were born into slavery. Mrs. Bethune saw the need for harnessing the power and extending the leadership of African-American women through a national organization. And thus, the National Council of Negro Women was born. NCNW is an organization of organizations. We are an umbrella organization for 32 national women's organizations, as well as 300 sections, uh, both uh, in communities and on college campuses around the country. We have a mission to lead, to advocate for, and to empower women of African descent, their families, and communities. NCNW, we are committed to doing this work and we're just delighted to be able to convene our community of practice. Uh, each each uh, month, we convene two community of practice sessions, so welcome. Please, it's my pleasure to introduce our program administrator, Ms. Ajua Ose. Good evening, everyone, and thank you so much for joining us. My name is Ajua Ose. I'm the program administrator at NCNW, as well as for the Good Health Events Program. On your screen, you will see some of our agenda for this evening. So we will be having an overview of the Good Health Wins program and highlighting of some of our family-centered programs. So family-centered strategies targeting vaccines for adults and the whole family, successful activities, and outreach for pregnant and postpartum infertility, as well as integrating family-centered strategies into vaccination. We will also be highlighting some of our national family campaigns as well as COVID and parents activities, as well as COVID and men's. Um, as usual, if you are not speaking, please remember to keep your microphone on mute. If you have not already, please make sure to put your name, your city, as well as your organization into the chat. We'd love to see where everyone is coming from. If you guys have any questions at all during this evening, please place them into that chat as well, and we'll make sure, sure to address them during our Q&A session. Once again, thank you so much for joining us, and I will pass it back to Mrs. Moss. Thank you so much, Ms. Ajwa. And tonight we have almost a couple of hundred people registered to be a part of this Good Health Wins Network. Next slide, please. So how do we get here? Um, we are responding, we being the National Council of Negro Women, to a grant with the CDC on partnering with national organizations to increase vaccination coverage across different racial and ethnic adult populations currently experiencing di disparities. What we've done is put together a coalition of reputable and trusted, uh, trusted messengers across Black communities in the country to really help build the capacity and to implement plan strategies, activities, and implementation plans, which we're going to share some of the highlights of our family engagement opportunities this evening. But our goal is quite simple. It's to reduce health disparities, to increase vaccination opportunities, vaccination opportunities, education, and to help identify the drivers of vaccine hesitancy. We've been on the ground since the beginning of the pandemic to really respond to those needs through this national network that we've created. Next slide, please. To help raise the awareness and the impact of timely immunizations, and also to contribute to this base of evidence. We do it through education, we do it through engagement, we do it through impact and the network has grown tremendously in this year one of our performance period. Next slide, please. We are all over the map. Uh, when you think about what we look like, these are our targeted states, 12 targeted states that were selected because of their state organizations of NCNW, as well as uh, the, when we looked at the data, 
and looking at where the greatest need was a year ago. But boy, have things changed. Within this year, we have also expanded as we have brought in not just our partners like Vaccinate Your Family and other national affiliate organizations, but we have brought in the National Panhellenic Council, the Divine Nine, as they're often called, and we now have a very strong national network of 4.5 million trusted messengers within the Good Health Wins uh, network. Uh, next slide, please. And before we begin, um, we're going to talk. Uh, we're going to be able to introduce some of the wonderful partnerships that we have. And if uh, Ajwa, if you could please introduce our friends from Partnering for Vaccine Equity, uh, Jenny Haley. Ms. Ajwa. Absolutely. Jennifer Haley is a senior research associate in the Urban Institute's Health Policy Center. Haley is part of the team at Urban that manages group learning in the CDC Partnering for Vaccine Equity Program. Haley's other current work includes assessing ways states and communities can improve health equity in response to the COVID-19 pandemic, opportunities to promote maternal health equity and continuous postpartum coverage and challenges to accessing the safety net for children and immigrant families. She also conducts research on other issues related to Medicaid, the Children's Health Insurance Program and coverage and care for children and families. Haley holds an MA in sociology from Temple University. Jenny Haley. Thank you so much. I'm really thrilled to be here on behalf of the group learning managers of the CDC's Partnering for Vaccine Equity Program. I know that many of you joining us this evening or this afternoon are representing one of the 500 organizations in the Partnering for Vaccine Equity learning community. So we include community-based nonprofits, health centers and clinics, uh, university-based organizations, state and local agencies and others, all working together to ensure that all adults in the United States have fair and just access to vaccines. So hello to all Partnering for Vaccine Equity learning community members and everyone else working on vaccine equity. This is really exciting. I just wanna say we're really honored that NCNW and Good Health Wins invited the learning community to attend this webinar, especially as a learning community member, NCNW, um, our members express interest in learning family-centered strategies to boost vaccine equity and activities and outreach strategies to reach pregnant and postpartum populations. So when the team agreed to let us join this webinar uh, to hear about all of their innovative and exciting opportunities uh, and approaches, we were really uh, excited. Now, as with all of our learning events, we will post a recording of this event to our community website and um, all of our program members um, should have access to that. We're also going to include an additional recording in Spanish, just um, FYI. So on behalf of our team at the Urban Institute and the Partnering for Vaccine Equity Learning Community, thank you again to all of you so much for having us here this evening. And we're looking forward to hearing your great ideas to engage parents and caregivers. And I will now turn it back to you. Thanks again. Thanks so much, Jenny. And again, we stand in complete collaboration and support with Partnering for Vaccine Equity. We are so delighted that your team and your organizations can join us. You will receive uh, this PowerPoint deck as well as we will have it translated in Spanish. So look for that in your inbox um, in, uh, on Friday. So we wanted to just share a little bit about the Good Health Wins Network and who we are and how we got to be but also we have a dynamic team. So when you see all of the hundreds of folks who are on the phone, they are good health wins. So it's not us and our tagline is, we are better together. So we really wanted to talk about the Good Health Wins Network. We work collaboratively with adults, parents, providers, organizations, and other stakeholders to promote vaccine confidence, education, and access. Our trusted messenger family engagement framework strives to ensure that everyone understands the importance of vaccines for both adults and children and others in the community. Our community includes what we say, where everyone stays, plays, pays, prays, and has a say, and have a day to use our voices and contacts and connections. So if you look at this framework, our framework begins to the left, where we really focus on adults and children, and then 
we use our influence across our family and friends into our social realm, into services, into the faith community, and also utilizing the uh, media as well. The National Council of Negro Women, NCNW, started with a goal to build capacity to increase vaccines and booster shots for both COVID and flu. We assembled our NCNW state organizations, our national partners, including Vaccinate Your Family and TIFA, Trust for America's Health. We added our national affiliate organizations. We partnered with the National Panhellenic Council and with our 2.5 million members within NCNW and uh, the Divine Nine, we said we are now reaching a network of 4.5 million trusted messengers on the ground. We are in every sector, every field, every service, and in every community. We are the aunts, the uncles, we are the friends, the family, and we are working to be influencers willing to have personal conversations, personal conversations, ready to creatively create the space and the grace to share accurate information to enable others to make informed decisions. And most importantly, we are a trusted messenger network committed to the long-term work of vaccine and health equity. Our framework where people stay, play, pay, pray, and, say, and have a say begins with adults who understand the importance of routine vaccines across the lifespan. And we're talking about all vaccines from COVID and flu, the importance of, of having children immunized in their series, um, HPV for teenagers or shingle shots for seasoned adults. Our Good Health Networks, we are empowered to use and make data-driven decisions. The network is a creative and responsive and we address both adults, children, pregnancy, fertility, men, COVID, we've looked at it all this year because it's come from the ground up and connecting to other social determinants of health by providing rides, Uber rides for homeless populations and foster care children or vaccines and veggies and connecting that to voting or bilingual health fairs with vaccines, national town halls and COVID safety. Uh, Ms. Ajwa Ose, she's gonna provide a few practical and tactical examples of our family engagement strategies. So we're just delighted. And after we do this presentation, Ms. Jade Walker, our NCNW data and evaluation specialist is gonna share a little bit about our impact that we've seen in year one. And then we're gonna open it up for Q and A. So really this is a conversation as not us talking to you, it's us being in community together. And that's where family engagement begins with us. Ms. Ajua. Thank you, Ms. Moss. So like she said, we are gonna go through some of the examples of these different activities that our network partners and everyone involved in Good Health Ones have been able to host over the past year. And so like she did state, we did have our Uber program, which was very, very exciting, it was very popular. Uber was able, able to give us our own code as well as our own 1-800 number so that everyone can be able to schedule rides for themselves and for other people. We also partnered with the Black Women's Health Imperative as well as the WNBPA for the Take the Shot for the Win campaign, which is school-based and also to really able to reach the kids. Then we also had our free buttons for COVID vaccine as well as flu. And when we say free, we mean free free, so free that they are now on back order. So hopefully they will be able to be back and people can utilize those more as well. Just some more few examples. Like we said, we had our Uber program and on this first flyer, you can see our 800 number so that you can also schedule a ride for someone else. So even if it wasn't for yourself, you can call that number and you could schedule a ride for a family, family member or for someone in the community or for someone in your section or for someone in your chapter, making it much easier for everyone to utilize these rides and for people to go and get their shots in arms. And then we did have this Uber program and we hope to have it again this year. We also provided voucher training so that everyone was aware of how to use the Uber app and how to use the voucher. And we also have our COVID conversations every fourth Tuesday of the month. 
And these are just a very, very great opportunity for everybody to come in and ask their questions to the experts about vaccines, whether it be COVID or even just regular vaccines like we are talking about. And this is an example of parents in COVID as well as family centered. So Northern California, they hosted a webinar titled Parents in the Pandemic Addressing Child Vaccination Hesitancy. As we go through COVID and as we go through this journey with the vaccine, the age gets lower and lower, right? So they said 12 and up, and then they said five and up, and now they're working on two and up. So there can be some reservations, um, but we just want to make sure that we're able to answer those questions and have those conversations. And so North Northern California was amazing and was able to have this opportunity to do such. And we also have some family-centered as well as kids activities. So our Health Equity Committee, COVID-19 subcommittee hosted a COVID and children going back to school national town hall in the summertime. Like we said, as we move through this journey of vaccinations and kids, we want to know how to keep our kids safe and how to make sure that they're staying safe at school so that they can also come home and be safe as well. So this was a great space with really wonderful speakers. And the Greenville County section in South Carolina hosted a kids and COVID event. So not only are the parents learning about how to handle COVID and vaccinations, but the kids are also learning. And I think that is great because you're never too old to learn. You're never too young to learn. And here are some of our opportunities for our maternal health. California also hosted a baby talk. So they were addressing COVID vaccines and fertility questions. So that's a, also another popular question that people have. How is the vaccine going to affect me if I'm pregnant? How is it going to affect me in the future if I decide to have kids? Um, and there were great speakers on this as well from people that were in OBGYN as well as someone that was engaged and her and her fiance want to have a kid and they're hesitant because of the vaccine. And so once again, this is another opportunity for people to have their questions answered and more opportunities for people to address them. And we can't forget about the men. Yes, it is the National Council of Negro Women, but we do have men supporting us as well. And thanks to the Divine Nine, when we brought in our fraternities, they have hosted wonderful events. So as you can see, Kappa Alpha Psi, they had a day of COVID and flu vaccine awareness and a social media takeover. Our Charles L. Franklin Associates, which is the men's branch of NCNW, they also had a men's session during our affiliates assembly with our fraternity members talking about their COVID-19 programs, as well as Phi Beta Sigma fraternity hosted a health, virtual health and wellness fair. Um, so these are just a lot of different opportunities and a lot of different ways for your organization or for you to get COVID into the community and to touch each different kind of person. And also going into vaccination programs and different strategies. So Texas, NCNW in Texas partnered with Harris County Public Health as well as Dia de, de la Mujer Latina in hosted the Health Fiesta. So they were able to provide the free Uber rides as well as different kinds of vaccines and different kinds of health screening. So these are just ways to incorporate good health wins or different vaccination programs into what is already happening in your community. And I will pass that back to you as well. Thank you. Thank you so much for sharing that, Ajua. And in a second, um, while I'm uh, speaking, if you can pull up our Good Health Wins website, would like to show them where they can join us and find out more about NCNW at goodhealthwins.org. One of the things that we're very pleased and excited about with our Good Health Wins network is our ability to create educational campaigns that the entire coalition, we co-join together and collaborate in various uh, campaigns month over month over month so that we are moving with the cadence to really drive impact in the work that our organizations are doing. When we talk about our organizations, these are uh, primarily 30 national organizations who have come together to say, we're in this together around our topics. So as we launch our second year of Good Health Wins for 2022-2023, we will host educational campaigns um, from everything from um, April 
as our COVID and maternal health national town hall meeting with NCNW, our health equity COVID subcommittee. We will host um, our national town hall around COVID and social determinants of health, as well as, you know, June, we'll talk about COVID and mental health. July, we'll do back to school. So you can see that our level of family engagement crosses all different types of organizations, all types of topics uh, that we try to do together. In I think it might be her connection. Looks like everybody else is moving. That you'll be able to do this <laughs> as well. So we are very excited about this, but we wanted to make sure that we're not just doing a lot of activities around family engagement. Again, when we say family engagement, we really want to talk about the whole family. So making sure that we are addressing adults is our focus but also looking at the work that we do with children, that we do with our college segmented groups and other demographics. So that's what's really exciting about as we roll out into year two. Um, Ms. Adra, if you could share some of the highlights of what's going to happen um, in Good Health Wins. And both this is last month, we just celebrated Good Health Wins Week. It was an amazing week of all of us coming together around different activities. Um, if we could talk a little bit about what we did for Good Health Wins Week, as well as because all of those activities, although they look as though they're standalone uh, events, they're all engaging different folks and different strokes because people enter into the vaccine space in different uh, points. So we'll talk a little bit about our Good Health Wins Week and then talk about our impact. Yes, so last week, like Ms. Moss stated, was Good Health Wins Week, or two weeks ago, actually, at this point, um, but it went extremely well. We had a show and share campaign where we were able to highlight a lot of the activities that were done in year one by our states, as well as our partnering organizations. On Tuesday, we had a lunch and learn with Vaccinate Your Family, where they went over their state of the immunion, which actually just released earlier this week, and that will be on our website in our resources section. We also partnered with Top Ladies of Distinction for a national town hall on COVID safety for families, schools, and communities, which offered a lot of very practical advice on how to combat COVID and be safe um, today. And also on Friday, we had a town hall also with the South Carolina State Mechanism of NCNW, highlighting Black health and wellness in, in a virtual town hall. On Sunday, we had our Super Soul Sunday, which that was a very great name coined by Ms. Moss because it was right after the Super Bowl, but we got to highlight different ecumenical activities with COVID and also a video from Kappa Alpha Psi in Texas for their voices, veggies, and vax votes, veggies, and vaccines, excuse me if I got the name wrong, but three Bs. It was a very amazing video um, just highlighting their vaccine opportunities and tying it to voting as well. So there was a lot of great th stuff that happened with Good Health Wins Week. It was great having everyone involved. And like Ms. Moss said, able to touch a lot of different people. When we say family, we mean the entire family. Thank, thank you for that. And the numbers from last week were astronomical. When we think about how many people we were able to reach, uh, we reached over 3,000 that were registered for all of these events across the U.S. But the beauty of the network is that this is work that's happening on the ground. And so it's coming from communities, all across communities and organizations all across the U.S who are committed to vaccine access, vaccine um, uh, clinics, uh, making sure that we're able to give good, credible information to adults and children alike. So if we may have Ms. Jade Walker, if you could share a little bit about some of the data that we're starting to see from the Good Health Wins Network. Of with our course. family engagement, Ms. Ms. Jade. Of course, evening everybody. Um, yeah, so what I did here was, again, we're focused on our strategies considering family-centered, full adult, and then pregnancy postpartum. So what you see on this first slide is really just focusing on the family and adult. And we had a lot of activities, of course, focused on adults. 
uh, what we saw in terms of our, our influential speakers, as you see up here, right here on the right hand side, is I ranked them by order about the uh, uh, groups that appeared most often in your activities. That was usually healthcare workers. Then there were healthcare professionals that were present at the largest, um, as the secondary largest group. And then it was the faith based cultural leaders and CNW members and other organizations as well who uh, fill as that cultural leader title. And then, of course, um, celeb and political figures. Those were the biggest influential speakers present at these activities that resulted, again, in family focused and adult strategies that resulted in vaccines as well. Uh, what we also saw to Ms. Moss's point about um, being very in person, personable. We saw a lot of collateral communications being exchanged. So that's really just a fancy title we came up with to describe our buttons, uh, the free buttons we mentioned, those flyers, um, anything someone could take away with them so they could think about your campaign or your event later. So we call that collateral. We saw a lot of collateral materials being passed out, but again, the largest reach was with our radio and our social media. Uh, with TV and radio, within just the 53 events that are applicable under these adult and family strategies, uh, we reached over 70,000 people through TV and radio. So just to give you a sense of um, you know, what the outcome was when we kind of put all this together, that's as, that's as many people as we can reach. Um, I put here, of course, the number of vaccines that we managed to, um, to reach out and disseminate. It's over about 4,000 within the 2021 year. Um, and then the total attendance for all these events, I believe there's uh, 53 that are applicable. Of course, there's other events that we had, but again, they're not as um, adult and I'll say family, family focused in a sense. Um, they might be something more embedded in NCNW activities that we've overlaid with COVID. So it's more of a, that kind of focus. Um, the type of partnerships that we've uh, really encouraged are, uh, I would say, our sub-recipients and our partners, as well as NCNW um, chapters, or excuse me, sections who are doing this work is to really link up with their regional or their local health centers. So um, I've seen a lot of um, private healthcare centers, Agape Health Center, North Carolina. I've seen state agency um, partnerships where the health department will provide vaccines, uh, NCNW or other subrecipients are utilizing um, their efforts in terms of encouraging people to come with incentives or making people comfortable. So it just kind of varies on the level of partnership and what we can provide each other as a resource. And again, on this slide is again, just focused on family as well as uh, adults. The next slide is more focused on pregnancy and postpartum. Ms. Oshawa was very kind enough to go through most of the pregnancy events that we had, again, because most of our events are focused on adults. Uh, but what you'll see is the influential speakers about the same. Um, however, the change in ranking is that the cultural leaders in these particular events that again, that focus on pregnancy postpartum um, our faith-based leaders and cultural leaders were really the largest groups of individuals speaking at these events and making sure the um, residents were getting their questions answered. So I definitely want to point that out. And again, healthcare workers were the second largest group of individuals present, along with healthcare professionals and um, celebs. Communications, again, uh, the collateral communications was the highest because okay, you pass enough uh, flyers, t-shirts, things of that nature. But outdoor advertisement was actually the largest reach uh, we had to get people coming into these events as opposed to TV and radio. It was actually outdoor um, advertisement. And that could be just lawn signs, um, maybe a few car wraps. We didn't do too many billboards and things of that nature. And again, I list the total attendance of these particular activities that i um, listed here. On the left side, this is just a description. So you can kind of get a sense of where this occurred and what was the focus on. And I listed some of the partnerships we had, you know, uh, try to give you as, as the breadth of variety that uh, comes when we make these partnerships. Um, I'm going to stop right there and let Ms. Moss go ahead and guide us into the Q&A. Well, again, part of the Good Health Wins Network in our community of practice is to just show you some examples of the work that's happening all across the country. But we want to really open up now and be be able to field some questions about how we built out the network or, you know, uh, any questions regarding specific activities around getting uh, experts or uh, really focusing in on uh, the work that we've been doing. I would say that overall, 
we've been fielding and watching what's been happening in the general market. And so a lot of times, a lot of the events and workshops that we're doing, it's based off of need and looking at the data in that respective market or city, et cetera. So, you know, even as we were doing just bit, uh, generic COVID and flu conversations, we very quickly saw that there were lots of questions being asked around fertility, lots of questions being asked around hesitancy about, about how this is going to impact pregnancy and postpartum work. And, and so the work that we're doing, it comes up very organically, but we've been very intentional too, so that when there is an, a topic identified, we try to tackle it head on. And so to give our um, network members um, real relevant information, um, that's why we've been so excited to have Vaccinate Your Family as a subject matter expert in this grant performance period with us uh, so that people know that you can trust and go and get this information. We've done things a little bit differently. So for example, when, whenever we give a webinar, we always provide time for our guests to, we have the experts to give a little bit of information, but the majority of the time is asking real practical and tactical questions of individuals who want to know um, what's going on. So we're not afraid to take on topics, uh, but we really want to get in there, roll up our sleeves and, and uh, get the work done. So I wanted to see if there are any questions in the chat or if anyone has any questions, please raise your hand and we'll try to get to you all. Um, as we can. I know Erica, you had a question. All right. Hi, Erica Dewald, Vaccinate Your Family. Mm -hmm. um, my question was really about, you know, what's next? Have been It's been such an honor to be at this table from day one and to see this network, network expand. If you had your druthers, what's the number one thing you want to do next? Well, as we are repositioning ourselves, as we see, you know, um, how so many are addressing COVID, one of the things that we're doing is really going to focus on the importance of um, both COVID and flu and the importance of routine immunizations for adults and children. So we really want to create that bandwidth for everyone so that um, they know that our focus is not just on our COVID response, but creating a trusted messenger network where we are able to talk about the importance of vaccines across the lifespan for everybody. Because, you know, um, we were uh, looking at uh, disparities prior to COVID. And so we know that there are even more disparities now. So we want to create family engagement programs that are not afraid to talk about all vaccines now that we've been able to level set this year. Anyone else, please raise your hand. Hi, Mr. Don Gilbert, you can go ahead. Good evening, Ms. Moss. Uh, first of all, uh, tremendous compliments to you and the team. I have thoroughly enjoyed every presentation I have been party to. Uh, greetings on behalf of Cap Alpha Psi Fraternity Incorporated and Miramar Pembroke Pines Alumni Chapter. Uh, but the question was this, I know you guys are so for, foresight thinking um, with the, regulations and mandates regarding masks, wearing and not wearing um, seems to be changing. How do we keep, or well, what's the plan to keep that message in front of everyone saying, hey, we're still in a pandemic here. <laughs> so we, you know, we understand we're getting different guidelines and things of that nature, but it's, it's certainly important to continue uh, to stay safe for yourself and your family. How do or what's the plan for uh, continuing the messaging above and beyond the tremendous work you guys have already laid uh, in front of us? So as we continue with all of our work, especially our family engagement work, we are reminding everybody to stay the course, that we may not see the COVID numbers like we've seen in the past, but we know that COVID is still with us. We also know that the flu uh, cycle through the community. So we wanna be mindful and pay attention to knowing that uh, we really want to adhere to the mask guidelines, what's important for you. You know, as we've shared with Good Health Wins in our family engagement work, 
We want families, adults and children to make the informed decisions for themselves, but doing it armed with good information, knowing how to read your uh, data, demographic data from the CDC website to be able to see what COVID is looking like in your community. But also, you know, as we've said, we wanna provide the space and the grace for people to do what is best for them. You know, as I've shared with others, you know, my situation is no matter what happens, I have a child who has a compromised immune system. So we will probably always have masks on when we're indoors in a situation, only because we, you know, we want to continue to care for and honor and respect what's happening in our individual situations. So to answer your question, our, our thinking and our messaging is going to remind everybody to stay the course. As we create programs, activities, we are going to be mindful of protocols that we want to still see in place, especially if you're addressing things indoors. So we know as a network that the fight is not over, that this is long, you know, we know that it's moving from a pandemic to endemic. We don't know what's going on, but we know that we can make good individual decisions and honor the decisions that others are making as well. All right. Thank, Thank you, Ms. Moss. You're welcome. Any other questions? All right, let's see what else is going on. All right. Um, so we can talk about some of the great work that's happening with families and communities. I see a lot of our state leaders are on the phone, as well as our organizational project managers have Me joined us as well. Uh, we have a question. I, I didn't hear good, someone. Uh, good evening. My name is Tanika. I am the co-chair, newly appointed co-chair co for the Health Committee for DuPage County NAACP. Um, we are a part of the PHN grant in a program. And so we kind of do the same type of work. We are certified CHWs, that's community health workers right now. And um, I'm still in the office, as you can see, and here in Chicago, it's, it's about seven o'clock. And I just wanted to um, piggyback off of some of the questions that everyone else had, which is basically, how to continue on with the work. This is one of the first times that we've, you know, uh, done something like this and in, in involved ourselves in a grant. And I just wanna know how to continue on the work. Um, the community, we can see how we're touching the community and we wanna to continue to do that. So wanted to kind of figure out how do you guys continue on um, because COVID's not stopping and the disparities in our community is not stopping. So I'm trying to figure out how you guys find other funding um, opportunities to continue on your work. So thank you so much for that question. <clears throat> and I wanted to answer it in two, two parts. One, um, these community of practice sessions are very important to us. That the way we are able to convene our groups um, twice a month with our, our community of practice, we have uh, our COVID conversations, and then we also um, join in to each other's work so that we're not doing this work alone, so that nobody really has to get really tired or worn out because we are better together. So we actually have to live that. When we are looking at our grassroots work, we encourage our partners. We always say, when you're doing the work, you want to do it with a plus one which means you're never doing anything by yourself. So uh, for all of your NAACP chapters, you now know that NCNW, uh, we're working uh, with you all across the board. We're probably attending your events. You know, we know that within the communities of color, most of us are in multiple organizations. So it's just a matter of figuring out where those points of connection are and being intentional about the work. We have got to stay the course this year and remind everybody that COVID is not over. So that's number one. When we look at additional funding um, sources, uh, within the Good Health Wins Network, it's been very exciting about projects that and other organizations that have approached us to co-join co in strengthening the funding piece of this. So for example, several of our um, NCNW State, they received additional funding from Vaccinate Your Family, which had a grant release around a fair shot. 
Um, so looking at getting um, some of the messages and some of the programs into um, rural areas because we're everywhere, you know, we're urban, we're rural, we're black, we're white, we do it all. So as I said, we touch every fragment of a community. And so that's been very exciting to see that. Um, when we went into our partnership with Uber, that was a major opportunity for us to showcase a public private partnership because we were able to give thousands of rides by utilizing the Uber um, vouchers uh, that anybody in our Good Health Wins network could um, help find a ride and either with our 800 number um, solicit a ride. So that was very, a good example of additional funding because when we saw that there was a access issue, we said, who can help us get on the ground with that? Um, even within that Uber partnership, we saw um, a, a, another great collaboration that came out of it was working with our health departments. And it really showcased um, how uh, we don't think about those big institutional areas where we can continue to do our messaging. So when we partnered with a health department in Prince George's County in Maryland, they were able to provide Uber vouchers for foster care children and homeless populations. So it was that plus one, plus one, plus one, all adding together to meet the need in that respective community. So our groups have partnered with health departments, which have additional funding, with immunization coalitions. We have brought in um, immunization coalitions formally into the network in that we have had immunization directors on the call. We've got some of our members that have a seat at the table on these immunization coalitions because we wanna deeply embed the network into all of the mainstream immunization ecosystem. So you wanna think broad, everybody is a potential partner. We have had um, some groups that have worked with, uh, I'll tell you one campaign that was done, it was um, they went out and they looked at all the electronic billboards in a community and they just got COVID messages at the DMV, at the WIC office, all kinds of just creative ways to say, where can we strengthen the work that we're doing? So working with hospital systems, um, making sure that um, we, we had one group um, that I think Ajwa shared uh, that talked about vaccines, veggies, and votes, you know, so they're combining social determinants of health now into understanding the importance of the work that we're doing. And that those are the kinds of things that are going to take leg, that are, that are going to have legs in, as we continue to do family engagement. So think about all the places where people stay, pay, play, pray, and say, because you've got to remember, we've got to have that media, social media component to this, because we are most effective one-on-one -on -one talking to our families and friends, as we know that hesitancy wall is very strong right now. So it's going to take consistent messaging and constant messaging um, to make sure that we're able to get um, the vaccines and the boosters and, and just really just increasing vaccine confidence in general as we do that. And uh, lastly, when we built, when we built our, our grant to the CDC, we did so in mind with looking at, we knew that year one, we would have to have a very strong response to COVID, but we wanted to position and platform it so that year two, we would be talking about flu, year three, we would be talking about the importance of vaccines across the lifespan, and then year four and five, we want to talk about the importance of vaccines as it relates to health equity in general. So it's very hard to talk about, I need to get you a shot when they don't have food or they don't have electricity or they don't have transportation. So you want to always be mindful of who we're servicing um, in, in the work that we're doing. So we'll, we'll be looking for more projects with uh, Good Health Wins and the NAACP. So everybody reach out to your NAACP office so we can uh, do some work together. Did that help you? Yes, amazing. Thank you. I took all the notes. Thank you. <laughs> and take away it's plus one, plus one, plus one. Plus one, plus one, plus one. Exactly. We're 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 better together. That's that's yeah. the most important thing. You Thank know, you. and, and that's and that's something that it's it's a value proposition that we put out in NCNW. So remember, historically, we are an um we were we were formed as a coalition. 
So we are doing 86 years of what we've been doing all along. So if anyone knows coalitions, it's NCNW. So we try not to work independently or in silos, but we try to uh, bridge the gap. We've been excited that not only are we doing this work in the African-American community, but that we have our black and brown partners as well. And so that's what's been really interesting um, and we have an example of when we did the health fiestas down in Texas. Um, they were, um, when you talk about our state coalition co-joining with that Hispanic organization, they were, but they were doing more than vaccines. They were doing um, breast care. They were doing, um, uh, making sure that, that um, people had food insecurity. They were doing all kinds of medical tests with vaccines. So it wasn't just a vaccine event. It was what will draw people into the event. And then we embed the vaccines and the um, access to the shots into the other activities. So that's something that we try to encourage our partners to do as well. Um, Ms. Ajwa, if you could pull up our website, we really wanna make sure that you all know where you could get lots and lots of examples around family engagement. Um, on our website, goodhealthwins.org, we, we have a calendar of events. Anyone in our network, they're able to post their events. They're just starting to post their um, March events. But under, uh, under Good Health Wins, not only do they list the event, but they list the contact person. And uh, you can click on one, Ms. Ajahn, walk them through this, please. <clears throat> Yes, so like Ms. Moss said, um, anyone that is participating in Good Health Wins can submit their event through our event submission form. And once they do, it will be uploaded onto our website. As you can see, our events are starting to roll in for the month of March. We have upcoming, um, Swing by Swing is doing a informational table and PPE pass out. And like Ms. Moss said, we have the contact information, you have the date, you have the time, and you have a brief description of the event. Um, some events also do have flyers attached to it if you guys would upload one. So there are a lot of different ways to see what is happening with Good Health Wins um, and how you can get involved and how you can support and participate the different organizations as well. Thank you. And then also you can go out to our website ncnw.org and you can also get information about how to find an ncnw section to work with in your area we'll upload a list of our state directors um, but as well as our project managers from the different organizations as well year two has been very exciting in that um, we know that as we're able to go lower to the ground that the strength and the ability to connect to each other is going to be really important. So if you go on here and if you type in, let's type in um, Ohio, just put in Ohio, right? Um, so you'll be able to go out on our website <clears throat> and it will show you all of the different sections and the contact people in that respective state. So we want you to build this out as almost like a web Think of family engagement as not only are we utilizing the framework, but we're strengthening this web of connection to get deeper and stronger. You know, one of the things that we said at NCNW is that we would be remiss that if after our engagement together, um, if we didn't learn anything else from COVID, we've learned that number one, there are lots of people in organizations who care about vaccine equity. There are lots of people who care about um, and are willing to speak as trusted messengers. There are lots of organizations that even pre-COVID that they had health as a, uh, one of their major thrusts in their platforms. So this is not new to a lot of the people who are working. We just are now targeting and focusing our work around vaccines. So they've always been dealing with the social determinants of health, always been dealing with obesity and diabetes and hypertension and all of those other things. And so we are now uh, at this confluence of where we have all of these things coming together, but building out programs and events that specifically target adults and children to get vaccines. So we're just really honing in on the message. All right, we're gonna take a couple more questions. Is there any other question? Because this is 
Jenny? Yeah, I have a question. Yes, go ahead. Okay. Yeah, this is uh, Andre Woodard. I'm with the San Antonio Alumni Chapter of Kappa Alpha Psi um, and also uh, ADMT Solutions Home Health. So we did have a, a health fair event um, this past Sunday with uh, Macedonia Baptist Church. Uh, went very well. We did the health screening. We did um, uh, the vaccines. Uh, they gave out uh, veggies and we even registered people to vote. But my concern is the people wanting vaccines is really going down. Mm -hmm. And what, the main concern with that is, I don't think people really understand about the boosters. So, so my question is, how are we um, educating on when to get a booster, uh, the types of boosters, can we mix and match? Because one person I had to talk to about getting a booster thought she was covered, but she had had, she had had her last uh, shot over a year ago. Mm -hmm. So how, how can we increase our education on how do we handle boosters going forward? Because I think a lot of people already had, uh, you know, probably their second shot. Yeah. Uh, and thank you for that question. What you have done is reminded us that we have to keep informing everybody. And it's almost getting down to one-to-one -one conversations. So that's the beauty of being willing to speak up and share credible information. You know, as we talk to a lot of folks now, they'll say, I'm going to do my own research. You know, you've heard that a lot. Or this is what I've heard in the news. So you want to make sure that you arm yourself with the accurate information, with what's happening in your community, um, and being able to talk to people one-on-one. -on -one. You know, that, that this whole time of, of mass media and all the big things that we thought was going to work, no, that's why organizations like NCNW and this coalition of Good Health Wins, that's why we're really needed right now. So um, had it not been for your event, you may not have had, that person may not have had the opportunity to know what she didn't know, right? Mm -hmm. And so that's why we really appreciate it that as we stay low to the ground, it is everyday conversations 101. It will be in the grocery store, at the library, at church. It will be at community centers, at schools. So we have to continue to stay the course to keep the messaging out front um, so that people don't forget. Because I know we're all trying to resume our daily lives and get back to whatever this new normal is going to look like. But we have to know that, again, our messaging is stay the course. So if you need additional information, you can go out to our resource page. You can go to the CDC uh, uh, page. You want to continue to work within your community because now you've identified we have another need. And our need is we got to get more information deeper into the community because you were mm -hmm. like, where have you been? I know it was going probably more through your head. You're like, how do you not know this, right? But again, everybody consumes information differently. So our goal is to have the consistency, right? So tonight's conversation was about family engagement. I really like to emphasize the word engagement and engagement looks different for every person. Just like everybody had something different, um, help them to make that decision to get the vaccine. So that's why you don't know what, what that answer will be, but we just have to be consistent about um, spreading the word. Um, I would say spreading the gospel to everybody. So thank you for that great work that you're doing. And, 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 and lastly, I wanna say this, is that when you talk about engagement, remember it happens at all levels. So when we look at some of the work that you all have done, whether it be, you know, think about the PSA from boys to men, that was amazing the PSA that you all did for vaccine voices and, 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 and um, veggies, right? The, the, the flyers that you all are developing, the, the vouchers, but you're willing to pick up the phone, you're having the conversations, and, you know, and as we say to others, giving them the space and the grace to make the decisions, informed decisions with good data. That's our number one thing. So we have been translating this science uh, although sometimes confusing from the CDC, mm -hmm. we have stayed the course and we've said, look, you know, one day you're, one day you're masking, one day you're not masking. One day they're saying, take this one. We don't get into 
that roller coaster of messaging, we try to find the consistency to say at the end of the day, we know that we're better together if we can get more people vaccinated. And that's what's really helping us to turn that curve. All right, we've got one last question, anybody? Something pressing? All right. Uh, are there any events that you all want to lift up? I can't thank you all enough for the work that you're doing. Um, as we prepare for the summer, you know, just like in education, you guys heard the word, they have the summer slide. We want to stay ahead of the summer slide. We are already planning wonderful events for back to school. We are planning and back to school, we're talking about going back to school at child care center, going back to school at K-12, going back to school on college campuses. So again, we try to take a holistic approach of making sure that we're talking to everybody in the family. We're talking to those parents. Um, I, would, I would be remiss. You all save the date, April 21st. We are hosting another national town hall on pregnancy and fertility. Uh, we invite everybody to join in that is being coordinated through our NCNW um, Health Equity COVID subcommittee and the maternal health subcommittees. So again, two subcommittees at NCNW have joined together to have this conversation and we'll be able to do it during one of our uh, community of practice sessions. So definitely we want to encourage as many people because guess what? People, you know, when we think about what we have to do, we have to tackle the myths and we have to tackle the disinformation. Oh, sure. okay. right? So that's what we're going to continue to do. So again, are there any other events? So save that day. Um, Erica, um, are we have an update on what we're doing for our next COVID conversation? Yes, thank you. So COVID conversation, again, masking guidelines, more local, um, which is great, right? We're getting down to a more local level, which has its benefits, but we're just going to have another conversation about what is what, what's going on with masks, what's going on with boosters. So stay tuned. We have a very exciting speaker lined up that we will be announcing next week. Well, thank you for that, Erica. And I tell you, after last uh, month when you had Dr. Patazzi and your Nobel Peace Prize nominee, that's a hard act to follow, Erica. <laughs> but we're very excited and ask you all to please join us. Jenny, I would ask if you have any closing comments or remarks. This has just been really exciting. Thank you so much for inviting us. Um, I loved hearing all the ideas. I especially like some of the really practical ideas like with Uber setting up the 1-800 number mm -hmm. and training people how to use the vouchers or whatever. I think some of those um, will be really helpful and embedding the vaccines into the other programs going on in the community. I think that's so important. That'll really help our members with their activities. But I have to say my favorite line of the night was using family engagement, not just as using those networks, but strengthening the, the community web. I thought that was a really um, nice way to put it. So on behalf of our team at the Urban Institute and the Partnering for Vaccine Equity Program, thanks so much for letting us join your event today. We were honored to be invited. Thank you so much, Jenny. And again, I wanna say a special thank you to all of the Good Health Wins Network. Uh, we have some phenomenal and dynamic state leaders who continue to do the work. So thank you to all of our state leaders. Thank you to our national network partners, uh, Vaccinate Your Family, to our national affiliate organizations. And, you know, I, I want to stop for a second and say to you all, you know, not only is this important, but we have the buy-in at the top of the organization when we say buy-in. And so we've had several national presidents on the phone um, tonight, last night, we met with the Council of Presidents for the Divine Nine. Uh, when we think about how busy they are, but they still have now put vaccine equity on their agendas. So we appreciate and thank all of our national network partners, to all of our members of the Greek letter organizations. Thank you all for being in this fight with us day in and day out. And now thank you to our special friends at Partnering for Vaccine Equity. Uh, please feel free to reach us. Uh, again, if you need any information, you can find us at goodhealthwins.org or the National Council of Negro Women, ncnw.org. We are better together and we just know that we have to stay the course and the battle is not over. We've just begun. So congratulations to all of you all as we prepare to go into year two 
uh, for Good Health Wins. We are better together and we will stay the course. Please feel free to join us uh, at the National Council of Negro Women. We host our community of practice webinars every first and third Thursday. And we host our um, uh, COVID conversations on the last Tuesday of every month. So again, we're better together. Thank you all. Have a wonderful evening. Good night. Good night. All right. Good night. Let's go back to gallery. So good y'all are good night. 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 Good